FOL Marketplace. This is our business, economics, and finance forum. We come to you every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern. We want to say welcome, welcome, and let me switch it over to the, uh, <clears throat> the host of this forum, Mr. William Thomas Bernard King. William, it is all yours. Thank you very much. Welcome to our listeners and viewers once again. We're so happy that you're joining us. If you see the link uh, below, we please ask you that you share. Uh, because we're all about promoting, elevating, and educating all things Liberia. Today, we're going to be talking about Liberia economics indicator, the economy in Liberia, COVID-19 and everything. We want, to, we want to know what's going on. What are some of the key indicators that we should be looking at? And to help us talk about that and share more light on this, we're, we're joined by two very uh, powerful gentlemen who have a great passion for Liberia, first of all, and also passion for, um, for economics and business and markets. We're going to have Samuel P. Jackson, who will be joining us, and also Alex Chuchu Jones. Samuel P. Jackson is no stranger to some of you. He's uh, recognized many years of experience working uh, in Liberia, out of Liberia. And right now, uh, we are very happy that he's at the London School of Economics, which will allow him to share a little bit more about that. Uh, when we get ready to it, we're excited. And Alex, also, we want to hear from you what you've been up to. We've noticed you've been on a tear lately on the social media side of the house, all about transforming Liberia. So without further ado, we're going to go first to Samuel P. Jackson to uh, take a couple of minutes and let us know what you've been up to lately. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Long, long time. You know, I've been extremely busy. Uh, got uh, accepted into the... Uh, the Urban Agenda Program at the London School of Economics, which is sponsored by Dutch Bank. The Urban Age is looking at the, the challenges facing uh, cities in the uh, 21st century. And what this program does is try to overcome the development challenges existing within countries. So it's a, it's a, it, it's a program that addresses you know, the provision of services to cities, it, it, it uh, analyzes densification, uh, urban sprawl, all of the major, major, major problems that affect cities because we um, made a projection that um, uh, in the next uh, 20 years, over 100 cities in Africa will have a population of over 1 million. So with a, population, a city with a population of 1 million, you can imagine, you know, the, the environmental issues, the thing of garbage disposal, the thing of um, infrastructure deficit, providing light, water, and, you know, Liberia uh, is, is still suffering from the vestiges of this history and also the effects of the 14-year uh, war. Uh, you know, we a lot of large, large parts of our population were internally and externally displaced. And then we have uh, the urban area of Monrovia, which is the largest metropolis within Montserrado County, going to, to more than 1.4 million people. And then you can just imagine the challenges of open defecation, the problem of the lack of electricity, lack of, lack of safe drinking water, and all of those will impact the the livelihood in the human development indicator. So that's why Liberia is mostly uh, one of the poorest countries in the world in, in, in terms of development. So, so my, my goal is to learn as much as I can so as to be part of well, not just the, the urban agenda, but the whole national agenda, integrating the national agenda into the sustainable development goals. And, and that's why I joined this program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sammy. Uh, we look forward to you being a success in that program. Uh, that is truly an inspiration. You got the news, you shared it with us and we are celebrating with you on that. Now to uh, Alex, please. What have you been up to Alex lately? Well, good to see you guys and good to see uh, Sammy. Uh, he's, a, he's a mentor, I would say, and a, and a colleague. And I uh, congratulations on his new book. Uh, his second book, the first one was very good, and I read it, and I hope I get another copy. So, well, uh, I've been more involved with, uh, of course, working in, in, in the management. Uh, 
at a smaller company, uh, no longer at Citibank. Uh, so helping consulting and building a small business uh, uh, in, in, in the gallery and uh, construction area. Uh, also, uh, in, on the Liberian front, I've set up, helped set up the uh, movement to make Liberia better, which is the uh, Think Tank and Pressure Group uh, back in March. And I'm proud to say that it's doing very well. Uh, it brings together a lot of dynamic uh, Liberians from all around the world in different fields of specialization, including health, education, banking, finance, uh, uh, city, and, 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 and governance. So uh, I've been involved actively with that. Um, so far, we have a lot of members who are very engaged. We have a new executive director and, and a new uh, chair and executive chair uh, by the name of Pa McCarthy, a very dynamic young man uh, who uh, is also from the accounting finance background. Yes, almost 20 years of that. So what we'll be doing over the next few months is um, putting some projects in place, uh, do a lot of uh, public relations to get more people to understand that in Liberia, at the end of the day, you need to create jobs. You need to build up the health system. You need to build up the educational system. You need to build up banks. So hopefully we can play a role, uh, whether it's the government or the opposition, in helping with policy development. So we crafted some policy as a starter, and we are discussing those policies and also taking in more policies so that the country can go move the GDP for negative uh, percentage and uh, you know create more jobs. So basically I'll be involved even though I'm no longer on the executive team, but uh, as a part of the trustees, I'll be involved, continue to be involved in some of the projects, uh, building a website for the different counties that will talk you know, give us an idea of what in those what are the uh, resources and amount and, and capacity in those counties. So I'm very excited about that project and the organization. And if you want more information, you can go to uh, Movement to Make Liberia Better. That all, and you have all the information, or you can contact any one of our members or executive members. Thank you for having me today. It's always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, as you have it, this guy, he's not waiting for the government. Uh, he is being active. He's looking to get some numbers from each county building the website. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to take the next meeting and read our disclaimer, and then I'm going to pass it on to Dennis Josh so we can get into the key indicators. So focus on Liberia. The content is for informational purpose only. You should not construe any such information or other material as legal, tax, investment, financial, or other advice. Nothing contained on our media and written documents constitute a solicitation, recommendation, endorsement, or offer by FOL or any third party service provider to buy or sell any securities or any financial instrument in this or in any other jurisdiction in which such media material may be shared. All content on the site is information of a general nature and does not address the circumstances of any particular individual entity. Nothing in the media constitutes professional financial advice nor does any information on a platform constitute a comprehensive or complete statement of the matters discussed or the laws related there at all. In so many words, what we're saying is that, please, if you're going to make any kind of financial decision with your money, please consult the legal licensed expert and not use media as the source of making that investment. Dennis Jha, back to you. Thank you so much, William. And Gentlemen, again, welcome to Focus on Liberia. We want to welcome all our viewers from across the globe. This is Focus on Liberia. Today, we're going to be discussing the key economic indicators. I call it, let's do the numbers. So we're going to be doing numbers on those key factors, the key things that tell us the health of the Liberian economy. So we want to look at the health. If you went to hospital and you want to see what's wrong with you, first they start to get your vitals. How, how much you weigh, how high you are, your temperature. They want to get those numbers because those numbers tell something about you. The same way, they are numbers that tell something about the Liberian economy. Enough of this time of talking about the economy is bad, the economy is good, the economy is this, the economy is that. We want to look at numbers because numbers are so important that even God, in his infinite wisdom, devoted one book of the Bible to just numbers. Why? Because anything you can measure, there'll be no way 
that you will measure it and come out with anything. So Alex, you like that. God gave whole yeah. book about to numbers. Numbers. Numbers are very important. Yeah. They say numbers can lie. So we call these numbers, we want to talk the numbers now. I, I don't like when people compare things and say, oh, this president was good more than this president. Well, what are the numbers? Oh, uh, this, this other radio station is better than the other radio station. What are the numbers? This country is doing better than the other country. What are the numbers? So without numbers, shut up, don't say anything. We want numbers and that's why we have invited someone who is at the London School of Economics, someone who has been working since PRC time and also a guy from Wall Street who knows about numbers to tell us about the numbers. So let's start like this. In order to get the numbers, we look at something the, uh, ec the economists call key economic indicators. So let's start from there. What are key economic indicators and how do they tell the health of any economy? Let's, let's start with Mr. Jones. Yeah, so uh, you, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. You said you go to the hospital, you need vitals, your, your heart rate, right? Your blood pressure, all those different things are what the doctor is gonna use to determine your health. Um, compare it com comparatively with other people that's in the same age group, maybe the same race and so forth, the doctor can make a prognosis uh, on your condition. So in economics and finance, it's the same way. We use uh, in these indicators as a measurement to compare one period or another period or one country or another country. So for example, you want to use GDP from last year compared to this year or last quarter compared to this quarter. And then also indicators are good measurement for projections. So for instance, if you have an inflation rate of 15%, you want to say, well, we, our target is to get it down to 10% next year. And that way you can set some goals and you can set some real um, measurement and, 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 and in order to you know, improve. So basically that's what it is. Uh, there are thousands of indicators, different ones people use and for different, uh, Met, they use different metrics and different uh, indicators to come up with different analysis. And I think today we'll be using about five of them uh, to look at the health of Liberia uh, in relation to the past and in relation to perhaps all of countries like Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea, and so forth. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, can you add anything to add on that? Yeah, I think I think I think it's important for us to put matters in context. Um, the the health of a nation uh, can be can be measured several ways, but economists, you know, have made a determination that economic growth rate is central, but economic growth does not always produce improvement in the livelihoods of people. I'm sure you, re you remember the phenomenon growth without development. And in order to understand that, you understand, you have to understand the origin of GDP, which is called gross domestic product or national income accounting. National income accounting was the tool that was used by uh, naval nations like Spain and Portugal and Britain to determine how they would tax people so they could wage war. So, that was not refined until in the 1930s with a guy called Simon Kuznets of the, the National Income Accounting Office of the United States decided to really do an empirical assessment of the economic growth of the nation. And they came up with this uh, uh, GNP and GDP. But we, they started with the gross national product, okay? And the gross national product was basically the, the, the value of goods and services produced just by nationals, okay? They would take out the, the income of foreigners and non-residents. So the simplest calculation they, they came up with on the expenditure side was something called the, the consumption plus the investment, which is the C plus the I and the G, which is government spending, and then plus in parentheses, exports minus imports. So if you look at the consumption of household consumption, 
household income. And in the United States, uh, 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 household expenditure, household spending is almost nearly 70% of GDP. And you have, you have to understand that is money metric. And that's measuring the output, okay, the value of the goods and services of the country. Now we call it GDP. GDP does not really care who produced it, who didn't produce it, whether it's national or non-nationals, okay? Then the, you have to look at the, uh, the portion that will accrue to individuals, okay? Which is not a perfect, perfect uh, calculation, but you use the population, you use the broad figure. Right now, the GDP, the, the nominal GDP for Liberia is estimated at 3.2 billion. So you, right now we have about the population, some people say 4.8, some people say uh, 5 million. So if you divide that, that gives you GDP, the, the nominal GDP per capita. Okay? And in order for you to get the GNI per capita, you have to subtract the income made by foreigners. And those income by foreigners are people who, who uh, own, own shares in companies and they use their income and spend their income abroad. So that is money metric. But money metric alone. Yeah? Before we come to the yeah. details of these indicators, I just wanted you to broadly discuss economic indicator and how does it determine the health of the Liberian economy. Yeah, but 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 that's where I was going to. Okay. See, you can't, you can't have this conversation in a truncated fashion. You have to have it holistically. People have to understand what you know, income, okay, versus you know, consumption. Most people in Liberia don't have an income. So how do you determine the 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 the, the, the poverty of wealth? So we do something we call welfare economic, which is by consumption, in terms of what the the amount the amount of which is required to live per day. So if you look at if, if, if you hear the Human Development Report and they say 84 percent of Liberians live be, be, below a dollar and 25, it does not say they earn below a dollar and 25. So these are the kind of distinction I want the audience to understand. So when I start discussing the numbers, the numbers have to be discussed within context. And this is the context that I wanted them to understand. Go ahead, William. William, you are muted. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. I, I appreciate that uh, that explanation. In that, we have to definitely look at this in a in a holistic way. So let's 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 get into um, this uh, a little bit more. Tell us uh, growth rate of the economy. The growth rate of, of the economy. Uh, why is that important? What is it? What is the growth rate, Alex? Well, I mean, basically, I mean, when a economy is stagnant, meaning there's not new economic or financial activity going on. So the uh, GDP measure, so the total goods and services for a period, uh, whether it's one year or three months or quarter. So that measures just the rate in change of what the economy was three months ago or a year ago and what it is now. So it could be 1%, 2%. So it's just a kind of quick you know, and easy calculation of if we are we getting bigger in terms of you know more economic activity or are we getting smaller or we remain the same okay so, so that's what our rate measures yeah so uh for the uh, growth rate that that measures that uh in liberia right now what what do the numbers tell us are we trending growing or are we trending down with the growth rate well well obviously we we, we are falling behind in terms of in terms of our growth rate, uh, we currently not at negative 2.5, uh, right? According to the data I provided, um, there may be other data, maybe locally that may vary a little bit because if you can use nominal, you can use you know purchasing power period. But generally, we are falling at least two percent compared okay. to me, where we were last back. year. Okay, Dennis, go ahead. Rate. I want to know really what, what is this growth? Because the rate is just that, that rate of change, how it moves. Right. But, but, but what, okay. does, what does growth mean? 
Dennis, okay. Yeah, go ahead, Sammy. Go ahead. Tell us. There's a formula, and and, and I, I indicated that formula, but we we'll would do it mostly on the what they call a GDP calculation, okay, which is the value of goods and services. Basically, it will, we'll do it on the expenditure, okay? So we look at spending within the economy, okay? Spending on final goods, right? For example, we don't we don't calculate if if, uh, if if somebody purchases a machine that will be used to produce goods. We don't count that. It has to be a final good. So the calculation starts with consumption, which is household consumption, right? Okay. Now after household consumption, then we go into investment. Investments that were new in the economy, whether it's a uh, foreign direct investments or what is domestic capital formation. That is the I portion of it. Then the G is the government spending, the government budget, right? And then plus, right, in parentheses, exports minus imports. And the reason why that calculation is, is, a, is extremely important. Remember we have the C portion, right? In the C portion, there is consumption. So if you have a Great amount of consumption, it does not mean you're going to have a great GDP because at the end of that calculation, you have to take out what was exported versus what was imported. You understand? So if you're consuming a significant portion of foreign produ of, of imports, that does not really help your GDP calculation because you are not, because that income that you're spending to purchase those goods and services are leaving out of your country, they're going out and they're becoming income for somebody else. So it's extremely important for you to have a balanced economy. That's why it's good to have a trade surplus versus a trade deficit. That's why it's important for you to, for, for government to spend its money in a way that expands economic output. So we, we, can, we can produce more, we can earn more. And then there's something called aggregate demand. That aggregate demand originates from the household, household income. And household income grows because of what? Jobs and income and wages. This is where income grows from. So if you have income, you can have, there is aggregate demand that goes up. If you have aggregate demand, there will be a supply that fills that void, right? And then that supply will be also income to the manufacturer, to the supplier, or whoever the producers are. That's what we call the circular flow. The now, circular Mr. Jackson, you, you mentioned something, and I think I just want to kind of digest something you said, because it's a, it's a big bite. You said that in the uh, GDP, there are a few variables that goes into the uh, GDP. One of them you mentioned consumption. The other one you mentioned was our export input. And the other yeah. one you mentioned was uh, development, yeah. as far as some yeah. of those those key uh, variables. Right now, uh, at the moment in Liberia, uh, of those four variables that you mentioned, uh, which one of those do you think uh, needs a little bit of pulling up? Okay. We, 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 okay. Or, 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 or is it all of them? So many. <laughs> no, but, 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 but the most important part, okay, of the GDP calculation, okay, is the consumption. Okay. That consumption is the demand portion, right? Yeah. If you have the demand portion, it's to drive the supply. So you have aggregate demand. And then there is income to buy it. Then there will be a supply. Okay. And that supply, hopefully, that supply would, it would be domestic. We call that aggregate demand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alex, do you think uh, from what was mentioned, some of those variables, the export, import, uh, Samuel mentioned uh, is important on that, the uh, consumption side. Do you think any one of those other ones uh, could be relevant, development, the export, the import, or do you share this? No, I think I, I would agree with him. I mean, you okay. need the uh, export, you know, your consumption rate to be mm -hmm. higher. You need to you know, I would agree with him. I think he's the economist on that. Uh, they, they put the numbers together just so people can understand the economist and the econometrics. And what we do, we take the number now and analyze it. So I'll be relying on his 
you know, explanation on. Right, but 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 we're gonna get back to that uh, a little bit more because um, I think that out of those four, I think people looking at it will say, man, you mentioned consumption, yeah, we're buying stuff. You mentioned export imports development. We don't know if our budget in Liberia has that ability, but we're gonna get to um, that a little bit later. Let's flow to uh, the next question. Dennis, do you want, go ahead. Yes, yeah, because we talk about the growth rate. So mm -hmm. we want to look at the actual numbers of, of Liberia when it comes to growth. You know, as, a, as someone who is not, you know, with the economic background, I want to just want, first of all, tell me in one, two simple sentences, uh, what will we see if our economy is growing or not growing? And then just give me some numbers here. Again, again, demand is extremely important. And that demand will come from income. That income will, will, will determine the goods and services that are produced within the economy. Do you have an economy? Do you, do, you have, do you have a number? We want to get into. Do you have an income number, or or you know either either you are um, Alex, right? Alex, I know you had the economic indicator, but we're just trying to get an idea of number comparison, right? Just just yeah, but. You see, you don't want to make it so simplistic, right? Okay. Because, like, like I said to you, is any economy, what drives an economy is spending, purchasing, purchasing power. Purchasing power is what drives an economy. If people don't have money to spend, you don't have an economy. So what you need to do is to put income in the hands of people. So you give them jobs. Jobs that have content, jobs that produce goods and services that are demanded either domestically or internationally, right? Yeah. Remember the at the end of that equation, I told you the export minus the imports, right? Correct. So if Liberia, if Liberia exports rise, right? Mm -hmm. One of the problems we have, we, we have exports, right? Okay, mm -hmm. but we have a trade deficit. It means that we are importing more than we are we are importing more than we are exporting. But even the nature of our exports, our exports are mostly in the extractive sector, which is number our number one or, or, or primary. Export commodity today happens to be gold and diamond and then iron ore and then rubber, right? So right. those go out. But the the extractive industry has limited linkages to the rest of the economy. It means that, for example, gold production, the the B mountain is not buying a lot of Liberian produced goods and services. And number two, the income that comes from that gold production does not come in and is reinvested or is used for consumption within the Liberian economy. The portion of income that comes from there is the bare minimum, minimum, bare minimum wages that are paid to people within the gold mines and the well, goods and services used. Well, well somebody, and will services say, somebody might yeah? say, somebody might, might say, look, uh, Mr. Jackson, uh, surely we have something more more of a pressing issue because in 2018, the GDP from the mining section was about, uh, in 2018 was 109 million. But in, in, a, in a, sorry, in 2018, it was a one, it was 109. 2018, it was 109 million. In 2019, we went up to 200 million. Yes. So we have this money kind of coming or something, but is there something that, that we're missing? Because yes. we looked like yes. it, it went up. So if mining went up, why are we why are we so so behind in our economic indicators? Exactly. Because 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 the extractive industry is a peculiar sort of economic activity. Okay. And that peculiar economic activity is in an enclave. In an enclave mean there is limited connection of the economic activity to the rest of the economy. When the gold goes out. The money goes into the coffers of the people who own the mines. They pay a little bit of that money for goods and services that are that are produced in Liberia. So if you look at their their wage rates, right? Their wage rates are very low. They don't pay a lot of money to Liberian miners, and the Liberian miners then they pay a, a small bit of small bit of tax on it because they are low wage earners. And then if you look at this is very if interesting. You look at the royalty. If you look at the number second now, if you look at the royalty, uh -huh. the royalty on gold is only four percent. 
So if the if the produce four hundred, I mean two hundred million, and the and 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 La Bureau only gets income of eight million, that tells the story right there, because we're only getting four percent royalty. Right? Hold that thought then. Hold that thought because you're going in. But I but I want to give something else. GDP for um, agriculture. So the GDP for agriculture 2018 was about 242 million. That's 2018. In yeah. 2019. We are almost at 400 million. Okay, but but so, here it is. So, so are yeah, you? So is this yeah. something along the same line with the uh, mining too? Yeah, it does. But okay. but here it is. A lot of your agriculture, your agriculture produce is mostly rubber. Okay. It's sold outside, and the okay. income from that rubber does not significantly flow through to the rest of the economy. That's why it's extremely important for a country to build more manufacturing. The manufacturing capacity of Liberia is only 11%. In China, it's 39%. So if we were processing, for example, we had a gold refinery, we're making gold jewelry, and we're, we're, we're cutting our diamonds and making diamond and, and doing that, and then uh, diamond jewelry and stuff, like, for example, then they would have more money. If we were processing rubber and we were manufacturing condoms with manufacturing protective pieces of equipment ppes and we're doing other processing you have more of that income because when the rubber leaves liberia at a very low rate per ton when it's processed in akron or when the process anywhere up the value goes up to three or four hundred percent so that they the and then the the, the workers in akron I pay a lot higher than the workers who have the rubber in Liberia. So the capital device in the economy, the structure of the economy has to be based upon where you do more manufacturing and you're providing more services. Okay. Rubber, yeah. Okay. Um, so Dennis, uh, we've 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 pretty much given a few examples of some of these uh, the ways that we're making money in Liberia. And let me tell you, it is very alarming. I, I didn't even bring up this number, which is part of the GDP, which was services. So in 2018, it was $434 million, 2018. 2019, our services, we brought in $611 million. So we're seeing that uh, in a country as poor as Liberia, still, there's a lot of movement in terms of money and so forth. But let's uh, keep on going, and uh, let's let's get to something else. Um, let's talk about can I, the. Can I just talk about services? Look. Services. Oh, look. okay. <laughs> okay. Let's look at the composition, like at the composition of GDP, right? Yeah. Let's look at the composition of GDP, right? Agriculture is thirty-four percent of GDP. Industry is thirteen point eight percent. Services, fifty-two point two percent. Most of the service economy, a significant part of the service economy is the telecommunications industry. The telecommunications industry is owned by outsiders. Their income, okay, that goes to shareholders is not counted in GDP. It is counted in G, GNP, GNP, nominal GDP, nominal right. GNP. That's why if you do the calculation, Nominal GDP is 3.2 billion, but real GDP is, is, is about 900 million. Yeah, Sammy, hold you that. Me? I'm going to be interesting to know that with your background and everything that you have, I think I want you to hold that cat in the bag in terms of some of your, <laughs> your, your uh, solutions, right? Uh, we we uh, really want to get into a little bit more with the uh, economic indicator number. I think now People have understood the uh, GDP. Something else we want to talk about, Dennis. You want to give the next question, or you want me to continue with the next question? Well, I want to, Alex. Alex, we were talking about the numbers, so I, I don't know if Alex had numbers to bring up on growth. Well, the numbers are the same, basically. I mean, it's how we uh, interpret the number. So mm -hmm. you know, there's one GDP, there's one. I mean, uh, one growth rate, one nominal GDP. So there's no need to. I don't have my own numbers, and Sammy has his own number. But the question is, what the explanation as to why that number is uh, 
not as strong as it should be. We may no, I don't know the number. That's why I was asking you. I don't know that number. Yeah, yeah he did say that. Three, know, three, yeah. Three, two. Alex, come on now. Yeah. Wake up. <laughs> no, but, he, but no, you, you did break down the different sectors of the GDP. Uh, you, you talked about the agriculture, mining, uh, the GDP in terms of percentage of the services. Those are all correct. Like you mentioned, uh, 612 uh, uh, million dollars in terms of the service. So when you add those numbers up, then that's how you get your three billion dollars or 3.2 billion dollars total GDP. And that number in terms of the previous year is how you get your either the it shrunk or it grew. So in our case, our GDP is down 2.5 percent. So obviously, almost all of those numbers or the aggregate of those numbers are smaller than what it was previous years ago. Okay. So there's no disagreement on that. Okay. The question is, uh, why? So Semi was pointing out about, you know, in terms of uh, the uh, uh, industrialization, in terms of instead of export, any raw export, uh, we need to uh, manufacture because then we can get a higher uh, current account in terms of when we export uh, the gold right, in, in, a, in a natural form, it's a smaller amount compared to if we made jewelry, just, you know, to be more simplified. So to carry that number up, so if you're getting, you know, let's say uh, an ounce of gold, if, if it's about $1,900 now, about $1,800, $1, and you export one ounce of gold, you're going to get $1,900. If you take the one ounce of gold and you make jewelry, you can sell, let's say you put it in a watch, right? You put a little bit of gold uh, from that one ounce in a watch. So you can buy a Rolex watch for $30,000. That has 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.00003 ounces of gold in that Rolex watch. So that just gave you the skill. So if we send the gold out, we get 1,900. 1, we break that gold down and we start to manufacture products, whether it's a watch or you know jewelry or whatever, we can probably get you know, 100,000 per ounce or even a million dollars per ounce. So that's where I think the problem is in terms of economic management. All along, we've been just exporting raw material. What is rubber? There's only a steel in terms of, uh, iron, uh, in terms of uh, iron ore. You don't export just raw iron ore. It's, it's, it's not profitable. But if you take the iron ore and make a steel and you look at the prices of steel, right, on the global market, you get more, 10 times or uh, five times more than what you would. So the mm. problem here is our, Sammy uh, and his friends, I would say, the economists, they, 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 they have not developed our uh, manufacturing base. They have not invested in Liberian industries to transform these things from a raw form. We don't even, we don't even really make wood, uh, you know, manufacture wood for export. We cut the trees down. So every government account, including the Salif government, this government, they sign a contract, concessional contract, right, with a Singaporean company or a European company, and they deforest the whole place. But they don't even transform any of those things in terms of making plywood that mm -hmm. if we were to deforest our, our trees and uh, our country, at least let's get the biggest bang for the buck. They haven't been able to do it. Well, that's, the, Alex, you know, that's the problem. In Liberia. Alex, you're, you, you, are, you are transitioning into maybe some of your uh, solutions here. And one of the things I do want to say is that uh, we want to not uh, uh, blame uh, uh, Sammy uh, sh surely for some of the ills of what's going on in Liberia. We want to continue because we have a lot to cover. Right. Dennis, okay. If he okay. has suffice this, I'll let you keep driving until you. Yeah, let me, let me read. Let me read a question from our audience from on the uh, economic group. Sam Wallace said, what are the factors negatively impacting the country's growth rate and why do these conditions exist? Then uh, Ives, uh, Ives one last said, Sam, I believe a major part of this problem is the lack of production of our natural resources. Natural resources like oil will shift and increase the country's production possibility curve. <laughs> Alex, uh, Ives is speaking some economics here, Sam. That I know yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that girl is smart. All right. <laughs> um, can, can, mean, you, can, mean, you, can you, can you, can you, what that question for me or for me? 
the question first. You see, that's one, that, that, she's one of the one of the one of the one of our team tank members. So I expect uh, yeah. same one of the factors negatively what? impacting yeah. the country's growth. Yeah. And I would say good question, Sam. I uh, I would say uh, believe a major part of the problem is the lack of production of our natural resources. Absolutely, so natural resources like yeah. oil will shift and increase the country's production possibility curve. Yeah. Okay. What is basic accessing is nothing. I mean, is is is, is not even Einsteinian. You know, it's, it's it's something very simple. What are the factors restraining Liberia's growth? Okay. Number one is bad governance. Let's face it. Okay. Maladministration. Okay. Misfeasance. Malfeasance. Lack of rule of law. Lack of an uh, economic architecture. That's the that, that's that's the major thing on the governance issue. And the other issue are the, are the structural defects, the structural defects, the infrastructure deficit. You only have 10% of the population on the electricity grid. You can't grow industry, you can't do value addition, you can't build a tourism and hospitality industry if you don't have power, if you don't have roads. So those restraints, those are what we call the major constraints to economic growth. So those are the factors, okay? So, if you if you if you fix governance, if you fix governance, if you fix the discipline, the, the hard work, and all of those intangibles, you improve your governance indices, then and improve physical security for people, then you can start attracting the quantum of money you need to invest in public sector investments like to build roads and to build dams and to make electricity. And then you liberalize the electricity sector where you have transmission and distribution. And then once you solve those problems, and those problems are not solved overnight, they solve over a period of generation. Liberia has been around for 173 years. So if we have been just chipping a little bit and a little bit at these problems in 2021, we will not be talking about electricity penetration rate of only 10% of households on the electricity grid. Or we will not be talking about only less than 6.9% of roads that are paved. We will not be talking about other issues of human development like maternal mortality and infant mortality. So our major problem is governance. Right. I, I don't think... I don't think Alice agree with you because I've listened to no, Alice. I, I, totally, I totally disagree with Sammy yeah, on this I've one. I've listened to you too many times and you talk about even you. your economic boom in the wild, wild west. Exactly. So I, I need to be paying attention to the economic class. No, no that means, no, I think in my opinion. Indicators. Economic indicators now. We don't forget. We, no, we see the economic we indicators. Things. Okay, so, no, we so what, we, show, what, what are we... We save the shows on YouTube. We save the shows no, on so, YouTube. So, so, so we, what, what are we talking about? Uh, we talked about we wanna, how we can we wanna, grow. We want to move to our inflation. We want to, please, we got to, you know, we want to move up, talk about inflation. What is inflation and some of the things that impact this inflation rate? Please. Well, but, but you, you have to understand that things have to be put in context. So you have okay. to have a little bit of patience and, and indulge us to explain why, you know, you want, so the, so the audience can be educated. Okay. The point that, that, that Semi was making in terms of we need the roads and we need to build the dams, we need governance, right? In terms of that, I, I disagree with that because there are a lot of countries in the world that have bad governance. You have bad governance in Liberia, but yet Meta still can go to Liberia and make billions of dollars. Equal Bank can go to Liberia and make billions of dollars. Uh, uh, Lamco can go to Liberia, bomb mine companies. So why these companies can go to Liberia, right, extract, right, make tons of money, more money than our whole entire GDP. So our whole entire GDP in Liberia is $3 billion, right? Right. That, if you look at... The, the Sammy defense, hold on, hold on, because the mm -hmm. Sammy defense, he's been very clear within the contextualization of what he's saying. He is saying that for the governance part of the house, the governance part has not been up to par because the government has not has not done the necessary things to uh, enable uh, us to move beyond just raw material manufacturing for as one example. He's saying that- hey, Yeah, but I don't, think it's, I don't think it's simply the government. Absolutely not. Oh, I, I don't think one mind 
Well, no, hang on, yeah. So I don't disagree that we don't have we have poor governance or we have poor governance in Liberia forever or poor economic. I don't disagree with that part. But there's a lot of places that have poor economic uh, governance. Nigeria has one of the worst and one of the most corrupt governance in the world. But yet, you got people that don't go there in Nigeria that is building billions of dollars every year, making billions of dollars every year in, produ in, 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 in production. So how do you explain that? So what I think sometimes is, you know, of course, economic and financial topics in our, in our community is a taboo. Nobody won't talk about, talk about that. Everybody won't talk about, let's remove this president, let's remove this senator, you know, and that's one of the things that is really hurting us. The Lebanese man can go in Liberia right now. If you look at George Haddad, one of these people, and you check how much they made last year, they made millions of dollars. Why Liberians can do the same thing? They made our money under the same government. They made our money under the same economy, under the same inflation rate, under the same you know, uh, 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 GDP. So that's why I disagree with uh, the, the, the Liberian uh, econ economists that's blaming the growth. You can have growth. All growth is, is the calculation of uh, economic activity. So if STEMI goes in Liberia, opens a company tomorrow, and, and, and mining, for instance, and they made $5 billion, Liberia GDP will go up. That's why we don't have any dime. That's why we don't have any electricity. The problem here, so the, I don't think the problem is just infrastructure. So we focus too much on infrastructure. I think the problem is innovation and having Liberians uh, uh, manage their own economy, participate in it, and make that money so the economy can grow. And then the government will have tax revenue to keep up with the infrastructure development. That's a major disagreement. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining Focus on Liberia as you have it. Alex Chutu Jones and Samuel Jackson, both men agree can I respond, that the GDP please? numbers. Yes, you will in one second. Both men agree that the numbers uh, of our GDP are what they are, but one seems to think that it's from the governance side that needs improvement, and the other one believes that it's from the uh, private entrepreneurial uh, uh, side. Sammy, go ahead and respond, please. Look, every, I don't, I don't want to speak on anecdotes, you know, to say Nigeria is doing well, even though it's one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Nigeria is not doing well. Nigeria is an oil producing country. Nigeria has been an oil producing country now for what, 55 years. And if you compare where Nigeria is in terms of a human development index and where Norway is, which is the highest, which is the most developed country on the planet, you can see that bad governance, you can see that bad governance brought war to Nigeria. And you can see that bad governance brought a lot of traffic in terms of uh, uh, the the lack of physical security with armed robbery in Nigeria, all of those things, you know, and 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 I'm not, and I can never say there is no economic growth in a corrupt country. But there's no economic growth, but I'm seeing the quality of that growth, how diverse that growth is, and how it impacts the broad numbers of people. If you look at the the income curve of Nigeria, Nigeria does not have. A, a bell shaped income curve. Nigeria has a lot of income inequality, but because it has a large population, okay, and you have a small number of people, and that small number of people could be in the millions, and they have income. So then you can have an economy, and you can have uh, Nollywood, and you can have all of the things that Nigeria has, okay? The other thing is, look, it is very clear, okay, if you read Asimov and Robinson, okay, why nations fail. Nations fail because of the lack of institutions. And Liberia, one of the oldest countries on the planet, has not built institutions that would produce the kind of governance that would produce the kind of, that would attract the kind of investments to the country. What kind of investment Liberia attract? Liberia attracts scallywags. There is nowhere in the world where some of the Indians and Lebanese in that country, where they will go there and they will even thrive because they don't, they don't obey your laws. They bribe your, 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 your government, okay? So you, you, you cannot compete with them because a, a Liberian minister prefers to be bribed by a Lebanese or a foreigner than a Liberian. And he doesn't give you the opportunity. And so as a result, you think Liberians are just sick 
we are ineffectual. We don't know. The reason why we don't participate fully in our economy is because, because of, of, of institutional you know, discrimination in our own country. I cannot get an all black in Liberia. I cannot, uh, and somebody can come from a, a, a little boy. I give, you, I give you an example with Elenito. He came in from, from Israel, a Palestinian Israeli. He had never been in the mining business before, but he brought a few million dollars because somebody said, my man, go hustle. The Liberian people like money. And this guy formed a company 21 days after the re request for a proposal for the Western cluster came out. Right? And because of bribery, he won the Western cluster. And he sold the Western cluster on the same day the concession agreement was signed. He sold it to 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 Sassi, to Sassi go up and debt up for $120 million over a period of time. So he walked out of that with $80 million. That they would never give me that opportunity, Alex Jones. They would never give you an oil block. I have raised money, hundreds of millions of dollars in the bond market in America for Drexel Burnham Lambert. I have raised money for other companies in Southern Africa. But I cannot, I cannot, they would never give me an opportunity to go out there and do a prospectus to raise money because I'm a Liberian. And, and that's that is just the fact of life. Even and, even and even so even in the colonial times, even the colonial and, times, and, the, 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 uh, the stores there were owned by Germans and Portuguese. And the Lebanese came about 75 to 80 years ago, and they continue to control the economy. Okay, because the the political the the the, the political economy does not reward Liberian entrepreneurship. It rewards other people. I mean, it's that there is nothing wrong with us. We come, we leave Liberia, and we are very successful outside of Liberia. So it is not, it is not, it is it is not us that that that, that we have the problem. It is the system in the country that restrains us from. Uh, reaching our maximum potential. Okay, let's go to our next economic indicator, that's inflation. And let's talk about the, uh, the trend of inflation for the past two years. Alex, you go for that one. All right, so, um, so our in, in inflation, again, just a measure of how um, the, the prices, the increasing in, in uh, prices from one period of month over a month. And, and right now we have a very high inflation and that, there's lots of uh, theory as to why we have a high inflation. One could be uh, the manufacturing, we're, we're inputting everything. Another could be the currency, the change in the currency, the rapid decline in the currency could be. Um, so I, that number is horrible. It's, it's atrocious. It's, I mean, you cannot, um, I think Liberia in Africa is the second worst inflation rate, especially over the last two years. So I don't think the central bank uh, has, they, 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 uh, they have managed the inflation rate very well. Um, and I think they have to first research what's the main reason why it declined up significantly in just two years' time. Even on our modern study, we had around a 14% inflation rate. That is still too high. Okay. Uh, if you look at other countries, in, I mean, other similar countries in Africa, I mean, you're still talking about 9%, maybe 8%, 3%. Uh, because inflation in itself is very bad because it's like you lose money. Every, every money you have in the bank, you buy something today, uh, you know, for $100, next month is $125. You know, how, how do you keep up? How, you know, if you're selling something, you have, you, you have to always raise your prices, you know, because you can't go back and buy the same thing for the cost. So the inflation management is basically, I will blame the, uh, the central bank uh, inability or you know that lack of knowledge of managing inflation, and we have to find somebody who has specialization in managing inflation. Uh, I want to make this last point. Uh, you know, again, we don't discuss our Liberian economy from different perspectives. You know, we take one narrative and we run with it. Our first approach is go to IMF. You know, because there's the inflation, right? So increase the interest rate. That does not work. It's not working. In fact, it costs harder. It costs more hardship, and it uh, it affects the ability now for investment because the interest rate is what encourages investment. So we follow this, whether it's London School of Economics model or it's Harvard University model. It does not work in Africa. 
Kwame Nkrumah got a PhD from London School of Economics. Uh, 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 Toba, I'm not, uh, what is it, Totma, uh, the one who ran for president. He got, he, he's a London uh, School of Economics. The point I'm making here is to manage Liberian economy, you have to understand Liberia's economy, understand the dynamics of it. It's different from what you learn in any school in America because these economies are more sophisticated. Okay, so you can use the same, the same, uh, 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 you can use the same uh, solution as you would use in a country like Liberia. It's centralized. All the economic activity, or 90% of it, is in, in one place. Whereas in other countries, you have a more broader economy spread out over different, you know. So we have to, like people like Semi, I think, uh, and myself, we, we have to be the one to set our economy and find solutions for it and stop depending on World Bank and IMF because they have not helped any African country. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I would say, we're talking here, yeah, I just want to read a little ex excerpt from from a book called uh, Looting Africa, right? And uh, by Tom Burgess. Tom Burgess is a financial economist. And he went to Ghana. And yes, what he, uh, 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 what, what he wrote in Ghana, that Ghana gold had not made it rich. In 1999, they was able to extract uh, almost two, $2 billion or something I, I will get the I will get the actual uh, I will get the actual figure on my next thing. Let me I kind of skip that. But in essence, what he was saying was they exported all this gold. They follow all the IMF prescription. And today, Ghana, all right, compared to the debt they have accumulated from nine billion to twenty seven billion in less than ten years time, the average Ghanaian, fellow Ghanaian, still don't have clean drinking water. The economy is not comparable to any any uh, advanced country. The HDI is still on a 60. And the only reason I'm saying is we have to be the one to put the book aside and be more pragmatic about Liberia's economy, building industry, building Liberian businesses, so that we can we can research those businesses, improve it, bring in good capable managers there, or rather than just looking at a book solution, which has not okay. worked. Thank you. Alex, I want to go to Semi for another indicator since you talk about inflation. But my last question to you on that subject for inflation, in just two simple sentences, what does Liberia inflation rate today tell us about the health of our economy? It, it tells us that, like I said, it's the second worst in Africa. The only other country that inflation is higher is uh, Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe has sanctions for many, many years. So we like at 25% uh, 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 inflation rate. I've never seen that. You cannot grow. You cannot do anything. You can't encourage any investment. But let me go to the to the to the, uh, the excerpt I wanted to read. And that, this is what he said. He said, over the last 18 previous years, Ghana produced 36 million ounces of gold, enough to make 19, uh, the 90,000 tender gold bars. A senior banker I interviewed in Accra Put it simply, people are asking, how did the country earn nothing for 100 years of mining? This is, this is Ghana. And the reason is, I would say, we rely on Western expertise so, so much. You know, it, with everything go to IMF. And IMF was the one I advising Ghana to do that, to open the market, to encourage, uh, you know, uh, uh, foreign direct investment. I do not think foreign direct investment from any foreign company will help Liberia. We have that $16 billion. Let me finish this one. We have $16 billion foreign direct uh, 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 investment uh, from 2006 to 2018, West Liberia, HDI. So why are we talking things that don't work? Let's come up with new solutions. Uh, but to answer your question precisely, our inflation rate, our GDP growth, our whole economy, it's screw up, and it's screw up not because of some of the reasons people are making it. It's screw up because we Liberians, we don't want to take charge. We don't even want to talk about it. We focus all the time on politics. Everybody thinks mm -hmm. that when they're going to become president, they will. Uh, one last point, I got to make the last point. Semi was talking earlier that, you know, about he not being capable of, of getting a, a mining concession agreement or to do all black, all that kind of stuff. I disagree with that. Uh, 
Sammy was well connected in Liberian government for many years. And I'm not, I don't want to point a finger at Sammy. You have to go to comments. You think if Alexander Cummings went to Liberian government and said, listen, I want to take over the mining industry of Liberia, Joshua would tell him no, or I want to start a bank in Liberia. No. The issue here is that Stephen Tower in the 70s had one of the largest companies in, in West Africa. I know Stephen Tower, but I read it from the TRC report in Liberia. So these were Liberians that made money. You think any Johnson's children that work at Wall Street, if they went to Liberia instead of getting in politics and taking and taking a, a government position, if they went to the man and said, hey, I want to open a manufacturing in Liberia, I'm talking about from 2006 to 2018, she was going to tell her children, oh, no, don't open any business here. Let's give it to the Lebanese people. So the problem is us, our educated people, our you know, foreign trained experts like myself. We go to Liberia and we just want, want to apply Western theories. And two, we just want the easy solution, which is get money from the World Bank to build roads and dams. That would not help Liberia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, right here. Uh, Iraya Bahasa is 70%. I don't want to this conversation about me. No, but I, I think it's important for you wait. not to make this conversation about me. Okay, let me, I don't want to explain myself to, to make this conversation about me because what I've done in Liberia, there's nobody in my generation has achieved that much in my generation in terms of the private sector to, to, have, to have gone after major things in Liberia. Uh, Alex Jones does not know I own my own iron ore company, Liberia, Liberia Iron. Okay, all of, we, we, we have set it up with, the, with the, uh, 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 this Australian company. Okay? We had offices in Liberia. I gave tens of thousands of dollars to the Liberia Marketing Association. If you, if you, if you, if you look in the past, in 2004, I owned the current metal steel project through a company called Global Infrastructure Holy Limited. Politics with Julie Bryan and the Liberia, the, the U.S. Ambassador William J. Blaney. They took it away from me. There was a court battle. It was a court battle for many, many, for almost two years. I fought, I fought against the, 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 the Eladito deal. The other thing is, recently, three or four years ago, I have a company called Liberty Sand. It's an oil company that was, that was vetted by Ernst Young to participate in the last bid round. You can go and ask anybody, Israel, I can sign you, you can go ask, Anybody, National Oil Company. We okay. did not get that. And I didn't get it because I didn't try. You know, so when you say we didn't try, Alex, I want to work for the Labron government in my home for three years. I went to Labron in 1978, not to work for the government Labron. I wanted to take a bank. I want to take a hedge fund, a private equity fund to Liberia. That's why I went to Liberia. When okay. I, in, in South Africa, I had a company that raised hundreds of millions of dollars for small cap industries. We came to Liberia to try to securitize the, 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 the National Oil Company. It did not happen because of my involvement or because of Liberia involvement. You think if went today and he said he want to take over Putu, you think those guys to give him Putu, to give him political relevance over there? Alex, you, you, you have to understand the thing. Not from the narrow perspective of being here, you haven't been there as an adult. So working to get something like this is difficult. You know, I, I did it for many years. I, look, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that I made in Southern Africa, I invested exactly. in Liberia. I have a no, I think it's important because you no, keep that, it, it, it got your point. It's, it's well I made. Have, you know, the thing, I had I had a I had a I had a I had an ice factory. Uh, I, to my house in Liberia, I brought 15 people. I had a gas station, I had a bakery, and I had a that's, restaurant. I've done that's, all that's, these uh, things. And, and yeah, you know, I, I want also, I want also, I want to talk to you for another indicator that's the lending rate. Yeah, and, and that was the interest rate. And again, like I said, Sammy, uh, so you, 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 no, no, you no, know, I have a lot of I want to talk about the uh, interest rate, the lending rate, Liberia's debt, exchange rate, and unemployment. So we still have many things. Yeah. To, so we just right, right. So, we so uh, we, you, I, I think you mentioned, and the topic was the interest rate because the lending rate in Liberia it varies from banks to banks. Okay. Yeah, and
and that most of those numbers are not published. They are, like I say, if Alex Jones goes there and he knows the bank president, he gets a different lending rate than when John Brown goes there because he, you know, or Yakawolo goes there because he doesn't know anybody there. So I can talk on the lending rate. You have to get the Black Grand Bank president and, and, and to come and talk about what their lending rates are uh, or to publish it in the Gazelle or in things. So I can talk about the, the, uh, the interest rate of Liberia which uh, affects the lending rate. So uh, the current interest rate in Liberia, from what I see here, is 22%, between 22 and 25%, right? It's still one of the highest in Africa, okay? And you can, so that means if I want to borrow money for investment in Liberia, let's say I want to open an ice cream shop and I go to the bank, they are going to charge me more than 22% Okay, more than 22% interest. We have a COVID situation in Liberia, and most of the times uh, when there is a, a downturn in the, in the economy, what central bankers would do is they would drop the, the, uh, the interest rate, all right, because the interest rate is primarily controlled by the central bank, and so that the lending rate can fall. So in America, for instance, and in, in I don't even want to use America, Ghana, for instance, right? If you go to Ghana, you'll find out that the lending rate or Senegal or Ivory Coast is way around on a 15%, in some cases, even on a 10%. And they always uh, have a meeting, of, a central bank meeting, to adjust that rate down. So you have a downturn in the economy. You have COVID in the economy, right? COVID going on right now, that's slowing down businesses. But yet, Liberia is still charging the, the interest rate is still above 20 percent that does not make any economic sense and i can tell you exactly why uh actually uh, yeah 22.5 percent i can tell you exactly why they're doing that the only reason they're doing that is because the imf and the world bank told them to do that and the reason the imf and the world bank told them to do that so they can protect foreign foreign or uh, uh, bonds and foreign debt because if your if your inflation rate is if you reduce it, what's happening? The people who have who have lent to the government, right? Their money declines, especially the foreign, the foreign or uh, investor. So this is not in the interest of Liberia. Our our interest rate should not be more than twenty, more than ten percent, on on any circumstances. So the central bank, the listening, drop the interest rate. When you drop the interest rate, that will promote uh, more lending. That will uh, create more opportunities for Liberians. What you're doing, you're suffocating the economy uh, in order. You, and, and, and I think the thing Alex, that they saw me, inflation. Help us you know, one second. So, sorry, but um, you you mentioned the uh, interest rate at 20 something percent. 22.5. Uh, 22.5. Are you looking at the daily rate or are you looking at the monthly or the yearly? We ask that because some of our listeners are asking, they're saying that yearly is okay. or something. So we just need a source you, quickly. You know, so so that that rate is either issued quarterly, right? Or whenever they, they are, the central bank comes up with it. So okay. they control that rate. And the last time, or what the rate is now, there is 22%. Before was 21.7% uh, on a on, in, in, on a monthly basis. So they measure it by monthly. So we had in January it was 23.6%, uh, February 25.8%. So they are they are uh, setting that rate on a monthly basis in Liberia. Okay. Any quick source for the listener? Just just one. Yeah, uh, you can go to Central Bank of Liberia, or you can go to Trading Economist. Uh, that call, which posts the number from the central banks all around the world. Go ahead. And, and Go ahead. Yeah. So, so again, that's where I differ with the Liberians, uh, you know, uh, management system or government management system that, you know, they find too many excuses. They, every, every, if you tell Liberia everything, wow, our lending rate is like, you know, uh, 20, uh, 22%. You know, uh, we're going through COVID. What does COVID have to do with that? The central bank can come out tomorrow and say we are dropping our lending rates to 10%. All the other countries do that. The U.S., the U.S., uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? Rate, uh, uh, interest rate was almost 2 3%. 
when COVID started to come, what Jerome Power did, he brought it down to 1.5. The next week, before even the next Fed meeting, he brought it down to 1%. He brought it down. Now it's almost, it's, it's a what? 0.25% or less. So these are things that in a book you learn. You don't have to go to IMF to ask them what to drop your lending rate or to, you know, you, anybody who does economics 101 or finance 101 will understand what interest rate is. Interest rate is simply the rate that, that bank charges, right, to borrow. And interest rate, bank get, get their interest rate from the government because the bank keep their reserve at the uh, central bank. And the central bank sets that rate. So there's no excuse. That has nothing to do with war. It has nothing to do with, 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 with geopolitical. It has nothing to do with any of those things. It has to do with the central bank, board of governors, getting together and determining. OK, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We've looked like we've lost Alex temporarily for a second. Sammy, we're talking about the interest rate. We had also the debt rate. Uh, any comment on that? Uh, just to you know remind yeah, absolutely. you, the lending rate, the lending rate, the Liberian debt rate. So that's where we are. Go ahead, Sam. Anybody who understands finance and accounting and economics understand that interest rate is driven by the cost of capital and the risks associated with that. So there's a direct relationship between the cost of capital and the risks. That's why the interest rate in Liberia is high. It's not because the government wants it to be high. It's because of it's the, the, the risks associated with lending and the cost of capital. That's yeah. that the reason why you have high interest rate, right? So, and Sammy, I want to play a little devil advocate with that, please, just for one second, right? Wouldn't someone say, well, you, you know, but we, our, all of our GDP in our mining services sector, agriculture sector, they're all going up. We're making more money. People say that this is a high risk environment, but yet people are still making more money. So why is our interest rate uh, being justified that we're in a high risk situation when we've been making money? People are making money and business is going on. Where's the risk? Okay, but there is, there is a high risk area. Liberia has bad governance. Liberia has a lot of insecurity with crime. Liberia is Liberia is just a corrupt country. Liberia, they are risk to the investor of losing his capital is very high. If you saw a country that degenerated into a failed state, a country that developed generated into a failed state that fought a 14-year civil war, right? And then the country doesn't have infrastructure for banks there to have low operating costs. You have to have a low operating cost. The, the, the banks use generators. Then the banks have other costs attached to it. So okay. the interest rate is directly there. If, if you don't have real central banking in Liberia. I was talking about where the Federal Reserve Bank in the United States can influence the interest rate by having a discount window. That discount window at the Federal Reserve Bank is benchmark interest rate. They, 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 they can afford to give you less than 1% interest rate at the window, and then that is benchmark for 30, 30, 30 years. The things that in a, in a, in a, in a developed financial architecture, financial system, they have, that's why you have low interest rate in the United States because the United States can print money, okay? The, the quantitative money, the three, $3 trillion that the US government recently put into the economy to keep the stock market up, it comes at little or no cost. And all of that money is electronic money. And it, it is the money that is driving the economy today. So people get 3.75% of money from the SBA or, or the Paycheck Protection Program, they get less than 4% loan. The, the, the United States is an is is issuer of currency, a reserve currency. Liberia, the central bank cannot do quantitative easing because why, what will happen is it will be inflationary. In the United States, with 
all of this money that is going into quantitative easing to show up the economy because of COVID-19. Sir, sir, I'm not money. Mr. Jackson, Mr. Jackson, one second, I'm going in and out. Mr. Jackson, I'm going in and out. Mr. Jackson, when they all the do, they put on my hand. Mr. Jackson, you're going no, I'm saying, in and okay. out. Wait okay. a second, one second. Yes. Yeah. Something with your okay. connection. Something with your connection, Mr. Jackson. Okay, so uh, can you guys hear me? Let me see if I can move. Yes. Okay, so I'll, I'll just pick up from what he was saying in terms of Liberia does not have the ability to do when it is it easing. Well, well, hold on, uh, hold on a second, Alex. Hold on a second, because uh, basically in so many words, you've expressed that, hey, this interest rate thing we have is just has to do with the will and our management. And in Liberia, mm -hmm. we have to quit looking to the Western world. And uh, I believe that what Sammy is uh, speaking to is that he's giving the more uh, approaches that normally would come from the Western world to why there's yes. high interest rate. So we are, right. we, are we, we know that both of you sit on opposite sides on this topic. So, uh, and you've, ex you, you've expressed that. So the man had a little internet connection problem that was caused by Alex Tutu Jones. <laughs> so, so I won't capture a lot of internet uh, uh, problem. <laughs> well, okay. we'll so, come back to you, okay? Let, yeah, uh, so, so, so while he's fixing his internet, I can capture a lot of that. But okay. what, what Sammy is saying here yeah, with, the, with the quantitative easing or any one of the Fed programs that Liberia does not have the ability, I disagree again. Quantitative easing is a new word. That word did not exist before 2008. So, the problem with us is we, when we do quantitative easing in Liberia, we want to call it quantitative easing. That's an American word. Someone came up with it in 2008 and said, all right, we already dropped the interest rate to below, and therefore the economy is still not bouncing back. So let's find another solution. So the key word, well, okay, we'll do, we'll take money and we'll give it, we'll, we'll put it in the economy, we'll give it to uh, the banks or to literally charge, pay. Uh, people who put money in the bank at, at, a, at a higher rate of bank stamp. So we have to come up with our own terms. We can't always, we have to write our own book. There are people in Liberia, I know economists that got PhD. Okay, the idea of having PhD or master's degree or even bachelor's degree is for you to take the little information you know and go up and expand on it. And so that's our problem. But let me give you some facts and some data here on, on interest rates, right? So if you look at interest rate in Africa, uh, I won't put the francophone companies that the central bank, you know, they, they have a central bank of West Africa that control Africa's and, and Senegal interest rate because that interest rate is 3.5% and 4%. Africa's and, 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 and uh, what do you call it? Algeria and no, I'm not even going to Gabon is 3 and a quarter percent. So let's go to a country like Burkina Faso, right? 4%. Uh, let's go all the way back to Burundi, 6%. All right? You want to tell me Burundi don't have problems? Burundi is not, a, there's no risk in Burundi. Uh, let's go to Kenya. Kenya is not corrupt. They don't have a, a, a problem. 7% interest rate. Uganda, 7%. Zambia, 8%. Uh, go all the way to uh, Malawi, 13%. Nigeria, 12%. Right? Sierra Leone, 15%. Interest rates. So let's compare ourselves with Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone did not go through war. Sierra Leone does not have risk. Sierra Leone does not have all the issues that Liberia have and more. So yeah. again, every time yeah. we find us uh, in an excuse, drop the freaking interest rate from 22 percent to 15 percent. That you. will help economic growth, and that will affect the other indicators because I believe it will raise uh, uh, our our GDP. It will also increase uh, uh, economic expansion. With 22%, I don't think you can do that. So again, the, if you're listening, the central bank needs to do that. There's no excuse for that. It has nothing to do with American economy. It has to do with common sense, common economic sense. Sudan, 16.5%. Sudan doesn't have a problem. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. You mentioned that. This is what I want to do. Yeah, go ahead, Dennis. Because I think uh, we've gone an hour 30 minutes already, and we didn't even go through our... Uh, and we have people that even want to call in. 
<laughs> so I think oh, we, we, we need a part two because what, even but uh, so where I want us to go now as we kind of draw down. I, I, I think it's important for me to, I, yeah, think it's, yeah. I think it's important for me to, I mean, to look, no country in the world can detect the interest rate. The, the central bank can create instruments that are market driven to help to determine what the interest rate would be. But it is the market that determines the interest rate. You cannot, you cannot wave a magic wand and grab the interest rate from 22% to 15%. The central bank can issue instruments that the increases the cost of money. Interest rate is simply the cost of the huge demand. So interest rate is driven by market forces. And the market forces in Liberia currently dictate that the interest rates, Alice Jones, you have an opportunity now, and you say that we in my generation couldn't do. You could go and open a bank in Liberia, raise five, ten million, and have a microfinance bank or, or, or some kind of development bank in Liberia, and you can basically you say you five percent interest rate. Everybody will flock to you, but I can guarantee you, you can I run a bank in Liberia with a default rate? The new default rate at almost twenty percent and charge three and four percent interest. Again, it's not possible. Because the cost of capital and the associated are too high. Thank you, Sam. Uh, we th that will be it on the uh, on the indicators. We'll continue on the indicators next time. But we can't close this broadcast without you know us talking about solutions, right? Because with everything that we have this uh, that we have uh, discussed, we see that the numbers are not good on our side. Why is that, and how can we get out? What's well, uh, I, I, I think, uh, well, personally, I think you need good management. And I always say that. And one of the reasons, so. How is this management then, uh, I, governance, Alice? Good economic management, not necessarily government officials, but we need good business people. We need good bankers. So right now, if we look at Liberian banks, the one Liberian bank that we have, LBDR, it, it's horrible. It's poorly managed. It's been around for not the only thing they can claim is to say, oh, we've been around for 1960, but yet we can't make two or we can't make five million dollars profit. You should be ashamed of yourself. There are banks that started in Liberia right during the war and are making that have assets almost 10 times what you have. So now I don't want to say that there are Liberians in Liberia who do a good job and are doing the best they can. That that would be an understatement. There are Liberians, even Sam, I think is a fine economist. And I think Sam will even make a good uh, uh, bank governor in Liberia because he's open to having this, to discuss the issues, wrong or right. You know, I'm open to discuss the issue, wrong or right. But we have to discuss, we have to have this conversation. And we, because we don't have this conversation, we take, you know, uh, innuendos. We just take what somebody tells us, especially foreign uh, advisors, right? We don't even consult our own financial experts, you know, we go straight to World Bank because they're going to give us $10 million to pay our, our people. So we take everything that they say, and that is damaging. So that one solution, we need to depend on Liberian solution. Bring Liberians together who uh, have some knowledge. Let them debate the issues. Let them find, give good justification. Uh, and then utilize that. And I don't need to precisely open a bank in Liberia, but I would want to, right? But I think the solutions that I'm bringing... It's not, it's not personal. It's about the country. When the interest rate is down, everybody benefits. Just like all the, you know, you got negative interest rates in the world. We're just talking with that with Dwalu. We're talking about that with some of the finest Liberian uh, 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 economists and, and financial experts. I don't know any one of them that disagree that our interest rate is too high and that we can affect that change. So the solution would be incorporate Liberians into the decision making. Uh, thanks again to Focus on Liberia for always trying to incorporate, you know, uh, uh, civic education, including financial education, bringing people to talk about these things, while the rest of our people, including our politicians, they don't want to talk about this. 
I never heard even a Liberian politician talk about, in this whole campaign so far, talk about interest rates when we have the second highest. And these are not complex things. These are things you can go around right Google and Google it and say and ask some questions. Our senators, our representatives, why aren't you asking these questions? How does that help the market woman who's trying to buy a, a fish to sell, right? You have a 50, uh, 20, 20%, 22% interest rate and a 25% inflation. That's what you, are, you, you, are, you, you, you have oversight. Call the finance minister. You know, find out and set a target. What would the interest rate be in the next year or two years? And see to it that it's done. So the solution that we provide, to me and myself and all of us, are, you know, in our own weak way, we provide ideas. You said knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. So when, when you don't take the fact that because somebody is not in Liberia or somebody is not opening a business in Liberia, so they can provide solution that would make Liberia better. That, that would be to a simplification of solution. You want to get good idea from anybody. And that's what we do at the movement to make Liberia better. Yeah, I think the government should do that. I, I knew, everybody I should knew do that. that was coming. I knew that was coming. <laughs> so mean, let's go to you. I know we just discussed a few of those indicators. But why are we here and how can we get out? Look, there's no way you can build a country without discipline, without governance, without institutions, and without a clear agenda, a prosperity agenda for your people. That's what Liberia is lacking. Look, my, the research I did for my last book, okay, my last book, uh, How a Pathogen Ruled the World, and in order to understand how this COVID-19 originated from Wuhan, you have to understand the economic history of China. So I went back 5,000 years and came back to 1978 with the advent of uh, economic liberalization in China. And I used to always believe that the Chinese economic miracle came about because of the investments of Europe and America into the Chinese economy. But no, Chinese, the Chinese diaspora, it is the Chinese diaspora, Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Malaysia, they are the ones that invested in the Chinese economy and built this huge manufacturing beat them up in the world today. Liberia, if you look at the Liberians in the United States, hundreds of thousands, because of the war we had dispersed all over the world, we sent 400, 500 million dollars just for people to eat, just for people to eat. Like, look at us in America, we have our own homes. We have equity in the homes, people in my generation. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity. If you look at 401k, you know, let me in my family, a two or three hundred thousand dollars in a four one k is no money. Okay, if you look at the our ability, our earning capacity, if we well, if Liberia was to structure itself in a way that the Liberian diaspora becomes a can't do it to provide the foreign direct investments into Liberia, to build the factories, right? To build the factories to build the hotels, to build the infrastructure for the hospitality industry. Lab Liberia can do that, but we are still consumed with politics. We are consumed with looking to blame someone for Liberia's problem. We always say, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do that? If we keep together as a people, and there's some of us that have the skills, and some of us have the roller decks. Some of us have the roller decks. I'm not in LSE because I need another degree. I'm in LSE because I'm trying, I'm building a network. The urban agenda, which is sponsored by Deutsche Bank, right? Imagine the kind of the, the access to the kind of global funding we can get just to build infrastructure and to build housing units and to build other things in Africa and all over the world. So we have that ability to do that. But the government, whoever government in power is always afraid of the diaspora, afraid of people coming in. No one interested in being minister of finance. Nobody interested in being central bank governor. I'm not. But, I, but in, for the six years of my, of my working life, I only worked three years in government. 
since 2003, I've never worked in the government of Liberia. 2003, when Tom left, 17 years. I've been in America for five years trying to fix myself in terms of my, of my sickness. And many of you Liberian professionals out there, you have the skills, you have the, the income, you have the savings, and you can, we can do the investments. But again, the field has to be in a not not it has to be level, and it also has to be safe, and it also has to be in the every environment for librarians to put their money. I know a friend of mine, Kofi Anku, okay, in Ghana, 500 housing units he built. Tell my luxury to luxury, a young kid, not even 40 years old. Go check him out on, on LinkedIn, Kofi Anku. Other Ghanaians, surgeons, and, and, and other people, you know, I'm a, I'm a quarter percent of Fanti, so I have all these things. My cousins, they own manufacturing capacity. Is Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, we have it. We have a, a situation with the connection for Sammy. Is the, Mr. Jackson, you're going in and out with your connection. Anna, in terms of, uh, uh, of the manufacturing jobs, they all they have to put out a hand. Okay? Forget about power. Go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you want me to stop, I can stop. No, no, no. We were saying that the uh, connection, but we, we heard your solutions uh, at the end. It went in a little bit in and out, uh, but uh, we did hear some of the solutions. We also know that you mentioned Kofi Anku uh, and so forth. So uh, we want to we want to thank you for that. Now, something uh, interesting uh, as we're coming close to wrapping up with our program is that, uh, Sammy, one of the comments that we got here is that uh, someone had been listening and they said that at one point you said that the Liberian government will not allow Liberians to run their economy, but then in your solutions, you are mentioning that we Liberians can uh, do so. So that was just uh, uh, something. No, something but, but it, it, I but said, I what said, right you now, know right now, right now, right now, William, if the government, if the government says, if the government were to open up, Hello, oh, how are you doing? If the government were to open up, and said that this is their strategy. This is their strategy to empower Liberians. Okay. That will overcome what, what the current strategy is to deny Liberians participation in the economy. If I, if I William and, 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 and Dennis, and, and, and if I decided that the three of us, we went to the government Liberia and said, give us Willow GC, give us Willow GC. For, yeah, shut, shut up guys, leave, leave. Okay, if I, if, if, go ahead and leave, guys. If I were to say, give us Wologisi for six months, and we will go and find finance and do Wologisi, you think that government like will do that? Guys, leave. I'm, 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 I got my grandkids here. Okay. Right. Imani, leave. Please. I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a Zoom call. Imani, you leave. <laughs> so, yeah, we have some. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sammy. Don't worry, we're going to be having a part two, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we are watching Focus on Liberia. We want to thank you. We're coming close to uh, wrapping up uh, this time. We've had uh, Dennis uh, to uh, where we are right now. We, I believe, is closing remarks or or you, um, something else. Yeah, we just we want to announce that uh, this evening at seven p.m. we're going to be hosting. Uh, the leadership of the grassroots alternative movement. They are calling for the postponement of referendum 2020 because uh, they think that the country is not prepared for that. We want to see who this group is and why they're proposing what they are proposing. So that's coming up today. Keep your dial here and focus on like, bro, we're going to be bringing that to you at seven. Thank you very, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we're talking about the Liberian economic indicator focus on Liberia marketplace. We got through just a little bit of what we're talking about and we've seen your comment and everything and we wanna bring these two gentlemen back uh, in a week or two for part two. We're gonna be here every Saturday, uh, 12 o'clock uh, 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 West Coast time, uh, 3 p.m. East Coast time. And so we're gonna continue this discussion because it's something 
that is much, much, much needed. And so please join us and your comments, if they were not mentioned here, they will be taken together. And we ask that Sam and Alex Chuchu, please read through the comments and please uh, respond accordingly with that. And we wanna thank you so much for joining us on Focus on Liberia as we discuss the Liberian economic key indicators. And uh, we're now going to turn it over to Anthony to uh, uh, send us off uh, with our uh, theme song that we all appreciate big time. Thank you, Anthony. We want to say thank you for- We all love you, man.